Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be doing an ANN, which is an artificial neural network. Uh, I made this a while ago, but I just kept putting off making the video, so yeah. Okay, so this is my whole ANN. It's a little bit long. Oh, I should probably just do that. It's, as you can see, I'm not very prepared here. Okay, so. Uh, this is where I import all the libraries that I use. I use the math library, which is just, everyone uses that. I use NumPy, and I use matplotlib for the plotting like and graphing. Okay, so this is all the data, oh, oopsies. This is all the data I have. So this is my training data that I train on. This is the labels for them. This is the testing data, and this is the testing labels. Okay. Right here is where I make, is where I compress all of the labels into a range from zero to one, uh, because it won't work if I just have just straight numbers. I need them to be compressed to zero, uh, from zero to one. Okay, so this or er, these two are my uh, activation functions and like activation prime functions. Uh, and this is my error function, but I don't really use this for the back propagation. I just use it for the graphing. Okay, so this is my hidden layers amount. So like I can change this to like 10 by 10 by 5 by 10 or something. Uh, I just like 10 by 10 because it's simple, but you could change it to anything. Uh, okay, so these is the, this is just to make it easier for you to understand like when I'm actually going through the code. It's just setting the hidden activation, hidden, hidden activation prime to sigma and sigma derivative. And same thing for this. Uh, I just, these aren't different at all. I just did that. So if you did want to change the functions, cause I'll have a GitHub in the description. So if you did want to change the functions, it'll be really simple. Okay. So this is where I do the weights. Yes, I didn't do biases. I just didn't want to. It was just too difficult. Okay. It, yeah, I only, I only did voids. I didn't do vices. <laughs> okay. So here I set the, or like I create a list called weights. Here I append the first layer uh, of weights using the numpy rand function. Uh, and here I go through the uh, hidden layers. So first it would be like, uh, I don't know how many, how many training labels. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, so it'll be like eleven by uh, ten because that's the first one, and then the next one. I'm just gonna. Then the next one would be like ten by ten, and then that the one up because this is the hidden layer to hidden layer. This is the input to hidden layer, hidden layer to hidden layer, and then um, this last one is last hidden layer to output, so this would be 10 by 1. So yeah, that's what weights will look like, like the shape of weights at least. Okay, so this is my forward propagation. Uh, this is actually like the, simp the simplest part because all you're doing is creating a uh, list called forward, you're going through and um, you're multiplying uh, each training and weights, to, like each training and weights together uh, and adding all those to up. That's just using the numpy dot dot function. Uh, so yeah, it's basically going through training uh, at the same time it's going through weights, multiplying them together and adding them all up. Uh, and then we're running it through the hidden activation, which is just the sigmoid function. And then it does that for it. It's basically the same thing uh, as weights because it uses the same kind of method. It does the input to hidden layer, hidden layer to hidden layer, hidden layer to output. That's what it's doing here. Uh, input, uh, yeah, input to hidden layer. Uh, then it goes hidden layer to hidden layer, and then it goes uh, last forward, which is the last hidden layer, 
to output or yeah to output <laughs> I'm probably not explaining this very well okay and this is the back propagation function uh, I am not so sure about <laughs> uh, derivatives and uh, partial derivatives but uh, I kind of got the gist of it uh, but I do not feel confident <laughs> explaining this to you guys so uh, yeah you can look at it try and understand it I don't feel confident <laughs> explaining it okay so uh, this is my training function I just use it to train <laughs> and uh, there's it <laughs> Okay, uh, I make an error function, this is for graphing, and I go through the, or I do the forward and back propagation uh, for the amount of epochs. Epochs is just the amount of times you do the forward propagation, then back propagation, forward propagation, back propagation, forward propagation, back propagation, forward pro propagation, back propagation. Okay, so first I run the forward propagation function, give it the necessary inputs. And then this is just for graphing. I uh, get the or I store the air of the two, like the labels and the output, in the airs list, and then I get the new weights from the back propagation function, and I give it all the necessary inputs. And then here I'm just plotting the errors so I can show you what uh, it looks like, like what. Uh, the error will look like as it goes through epochs and then I return the weights which is the new weights that the back propagation just spit out and then here's the predict function this uh, just runs the forward propagation and uh, uses the mean absolute error to as like a like measuring of how good it did so mean absolute error is the mean of the uh, absolute error so like, it's the mean of the absolute output minus labels, which is the same thing as the error. So it might make sense here because uh, this could be lower than this. So if this is like a point 0.1, like, well, it would be a list, but let's just say it was one value. If this was point 0.1 and this was point 0.2, it would get the absolute of that. So it would still just be point 0.1 instead of negative point 0.1. And then it gets the mean of all of these using np.mean. And yeah, it gets the mean absolute error. And then here I am just uh, setting the weights equal to the training because uh, it returns the weights. And then here I just predict, or like I print the prediction and I show the plot. Okay, so I'm going to run this on 100,000 at first to show you, actually, no, I'll run it on 10,000 to show you the uh, the graph. Okay, so this one wasn't great. It took a little bit longer to get to this lower point, but as you can see, it, it like was trying to figure out the derivative. Uh, yeah, I'm not explaining this well. <laughs> so yeah, it does the derivative. I I still don't really understand why it messed up. If it's getting the derivative, it should just keep going down. But as as you can tell, back propagation isn't <laughs> isn't really for a little kid in elementary school. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's what the error will look like as it goes through. And then it also printed the mean absolute error, which is 0 .007, and that's actually really good for doing a ten thousand. Uh, and if we do a hundred thousand, we can see that it got that it gets even less. Let's just see. Yeah, point zero zero three. You can see how it gets so tiny now. And I could even run a million. This might take a little bit, but we'll see. But yeah, you can see like I, I was just working on it because I wasn't really finished, but it kind of was. Okay, so. One question I was asking that I there's a really simple answer to. I don't know why I didn't understand this at first, 
but I've actually seen a lot of people who are confused with this, so I'm just going to explain it. Why these values are different, like, why shouldn't they be the same? Well, it's because we do the random weights at the beginning, so it will be random numbers, so it won't always be the same. Okay, so now we can just wait a little bit longer. We can, uh, hmm, what should we do? Because, I mean, it's going to take, like, maybe 10 more seconds. There we go. Okay, so you can, like, literally not even see. It just goes down, and it's just straight. And then the mean absolute error is 0 .00, 0 0 0.00068. So 0 .00, 0 0 0.0007, really, if it's just rounded. And then uh, I'm going to put this back to 100,000. Uh, so it'll run faster. I want to show you what it will look like if you change the hidden layers. Okay, so that got point zero zero one. Oh wow, that's <laughs> that was pretty good. Okay, so this is what it looks like if you change the weights. This is one of the ones that I did at the beginning, four and three. Cause I've seen some people online doing four and three. Seems easier. It's faster too, cause it's less. Okay. Oh my gosh. That got really low. So yeah, you can like mess around with the hidden layers. You can uh, find out what's the best for your uh, purpose. And uh, there's this really cool thing called augmented, or not augmented, or actually I think it is augmented topologies. I'm not exactly sure what it's called, but uh, it's basically where the ANN changes the hidden layers while it goes through which is really cool and i really want to try and do that but people say it's like as complicated as rocket science so i'm probably not going to do that okay uh thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye